Hi guys, I'm Kaylee from Love Learning Every Day and I have another library haul for you guys. So um, as you can see, I got, I have a ton of books checked out from the library um, and they're all to do with a different curriculum that we're planning on using really soon. So um, I thought I would show you guys. Most of these are spines that I'm checking to see if I want to have before. Some of these are um, just additions that I wanted to check out to see if I wanted to add that to the curriculum. Um, and yeah, and I'm really glad I did that because some of these books I will pass on and some of these other books I really, really want. So this is just a great tip um, in order to save your money. So if you are doing uh, Torchlight Level K or Build Your Library Level Zero, which is around the world, or any type of around the world unit, if you're doing animals, if you're doing American history, or if you're doing art and Van Gogh, I have you covered. So, um, yeah, so let's get into it. So I think we're going to start with my huge pile of atlases that I've checked out. Um, yeah, so, and in this video, as opposed to the last library haul I did, I have looked thoroughly through all of these books, so I can be a little bit, you know, more educated and tell you guys a little bit more about them. This is Atlas of Adventures by Wide-Eyed Press, and this is for Torchlight uh, K. Um, and I really, really loved this when I first looked into it. Um, it's really cool. The whole premise is that you're going around the world looking at um, tourist sites. Uh, however, the big problem with this is, and a, a decent amount of people have pointed it out, Torchlight is going to change it in a future update, um, is that for the most part, they do not show... <laughs> The people of the area very well at all. Like if you look at the Dead Sea, filled with all white tourists, <laughs> like literally white to the color, like not even any skin tone. So um, it's just not exactly what I want to see, especially in Africa. You can see that it's just a bunch of white tourists showing, being shown around by uh, people that are native to the area. Um, and that can be problematic because not all tourists are white, right? <laughs> um, and it's just, for me personally, I want to see more about the people and the culture as opposed to, I don't want to see a bunch, of, like, I, I just don't want to expose my kids to this. And it, it took a lot of talk, like thinking about it because I loved this book so much, but there are other options. So I'm going to go with, I think Torchlight is going to end up replacing it with the Atlas Obscura uh, version kind of of this, but again, it's not as big as this one and the illustrations aren't as cool. Um, but that is what they're going with. I think I am gonna go with the Lonely Planet Kids type of version of this unique areas around the world. So look out for hauls in the future, but that is my plan. Um, but this book is beautiful. And I don't think it's necessarily that bad, but just for what we're showing around the world, um, it's not what I want. I hope I made that clear. <laughs> um, and it wasn't all muddled or anything like this. Now this is an extra. So this isn't really an atlas. This is A Life Like Mine, How Children Live Around the World. Um, and this really focuses on social issues, which I thought was really good. So to my knowledge, no curriculum uses this. Um, but we will be adding this in for sure because I, I just really like it. So it tells you basic truths. <laughs> Every child should have water that is safe to drink and close to their home. Every child should have enough nourishing food to eat so they can grow and thrive. And then it says what different people have to do for food or water. Um, and the people that they show around the world, these are just the people that get full spreads. They show more countries around the world. But as you can see, very diverse. Um, and I think even in the places where like in the United States where a lot of curriculums would just choose uh, a white kid, they have a Native American girl and a, a black kid. So I, I like the amount of diversity in here and how it shows different, what different people have to do and different things around the world for education. And it's just really, really interesting. Um, yeah, so, and I think it's important to talk about social issues and things like that. Yeah, 
And I love how these are phrased. Every child should have someone to love and care for them. But yeah, so I'm excited about this book. We will add this. It's very cheap. I think it's only like $10 or something. So as a spine that we will be going through uh, the whole time, I think it's definitely worth it. This is, uh, this is how we do it. And this is kind of in the same vein as um, Children Around the World uh, by DK, um, but it's all illustrated. And at the back, you do have a picture of all of the families, but I think this is one we would check out from the library again, but it's not one that I need as a spine. The pictures are beautiful and, and the topics are interesting but I don't think it's one we need to purchase. But yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, and then we have Everything Everywhere, a fact-filled adventure for curious globetrotters. Again, this is one that I'm just gonna check out. And that one and this one that I know of are not in the curriculum. They might be extensions, I'm not sure, but they're not at least in the general spines. Um, yeah, and this is really cool. They just don't cover enough places for me to want to get this one. But they do have a lot of really interesting facts and things for different places around the world. Hong Kong, Tokyo, and a lot of more like pop culture-y things, like about vending machines and stuff like that. So, really cool. Um, and we will end up checking this out, I'm sure, because this does seem really cool. Um, I just don't want to... You know, I only have a certain a certain amount of money that I can use, so. And this one didn't quite make the cut, but it is very beautiful. And I love all the illustrations and everything. So yeah. Okay, and then here is the companion to Atlas of Adventures that's in the Torchlight curriculum that again, I think is being replaced. Now this one doesn't have that issue because I don't even think there's any people in this. However, uh, that being said, I am a huge collector. Like I have a big collector personality and normally I stop that just by not buying anything. <laughs> like, I really don't buy stuff very much at all. Um, you know, until this year, <laughs> you'll see a lot of hauls coming up because um, I'm so excited about this year. But in any case, there are tons of these books. There's Wonders of the World and um, there's the Oceans one. And so if I buy one, I, f I know I'm going to want other ones. As well as these can be kind of expensive. I think you can get them fairly cheap. Um, and they are really cool and unique. And I do like them, but I think I'm going to pass on this. It might be something I check out from the library, but la yeah, it's $30. So having this and the other one be $60 is pretty expensive. Obviously you can get them cheaper on different sites, but, um, and used. But getting one Atlas Obscura book or the Lonely Planet book, which is like $10, you know, it's, it's a big difference. Okay, and then here I have a wild animal atlas. I really hope I'm not showing anything again from uh, my last library haul. I tried to be careful, but if I am showing a, something again, I am sorry. <laughs> um, but this one is part of Torchlight. I mean, part of Build Your Libraries, I believe. And it is really nice, but I'm not deciding to go through with it because I already have one, which I will show in like a curriculum video or, you know, units about how we're doing it. But this is National Ge Geographic Kids Nat Geo Wild Animal Atlas, and we have uh, the Animal Planet one. The only thing that I wish that ours had were these pages where you have the, like the little animals around here. Um, I do like that a lot, but for the most part, they have less pages than the other one does. So I just decided, like, I, ju I just like looking at this and seeing where you can see all those animals. Um, but yeah, so really cool, but we have something very similar and I don't need to spend money on this, but the pictures are gorgeous and like I said I really love this type of layout to see the map and stuff so really cool um okay sorry if you hear something my kids are upstairs <laughs> I'm filming this during their break 
and yeah they're in their room which is right above this room and it seems like they're jumping but in any case this is the smithsonian children's illustrated atlas by uh dk this is torchlight's um atlas that they recommend again we will not be getting this one there's one that i like better <laughs> that i will show you um but yeah so it's really cool it shows a map it has like a nice pictures throughout um which i really like the problem that i don't like about this book is here let's find one so this is colombia and venezuela so it includes two countries at once and the border is kind of hard to distinguish um so you, i mean you can see it but I would just like something more clear or their own separate pages, but it does that with a lot of things. Um, it has lots of information, but, but yeah, I wish they would have had all countries separate and not lumped some things together, but it is a beautiful book and I understand why it was chosen, but we will not be going with this. Um, yeah. Okay, and then let me show you, this is Build Your Library's pick, which I think will be changing, or is, this is the one that is exactly linked. However, there is an updated version that I'm about to show you later. At least it has all the same words on it, um, but it is different and I like the new format a lot better. Um, so the my favorite part about this one is the beginning. I love how it says to use this book. It has a whole planet Earth section and tells you everything. I love the different maps. So there's time zone map. There's a, like a plates map. There is a climate and weather map. There's an oceans map. There's a population map. And I just love those at the beginning. And then all this, um, just all about maps. I love this whole map section in the beginning. I really, really like it. Political maps. And then it goes into the actual places. I also kind of like this. This is kind of unique and fun looking where it shows the top 10 things to see. Um, and then here is Canada and it shares a lot of cool things. And then it breaks it down into Eastern and Western United States but then it combines Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. Well, actually, yeah. Yeah, so some things, I just don't like how things are lumped. Um, to me, that like really obviously shows kids like importance, like these countries aren't important enough to show separately. You know what I mean? Um, so this one's fine, but it does lump so much stuff together. Um, but the general areas, I really like this. Um, and now I will show you the updated version which we are getting. I've already bought it. As soon as I got this one, I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> so this is the Amazing World Atlas bringing our world to life. But this one came out in 2020, I believe. So this is their new updated version and it's quite a bit different. It's very, very different. So I would definitely recommend this. Uh, the only thing I wish is it had the same maps in the beginning. It has some, but nothing, nothing like with a full world map showing you all the different things. So a bunch of map stuff, what makes a country, all that stuff. And then it talks about North America, which I really like and goes all into North America and talks about its history, people and culture, environment and wildlife. And then it gets into Canada and the United States and talks about that more specifically. And then it talks about each country separately. So some get full pages and some get more little sections, but every place gets its own things. Does that make sense? So I just like this so much better that we can read our own little section as well as it tells us so much history, people and culture, environment and wildlife for the whole continent and region. Um, and then even more so about the region even more. So Northern South America, it tells you more about, and then, um, you know, and still tells you about it. And then it gets more into each individual country. And I love the combination of like pictures and illustrations. 
Um, and I will say, I absolutely loved the history. So let's see. Um, the history of North America is filled with the hardship and suffering of slaves, especially those in the Caribbean and the United States and of the descendants after slavery was abolished in the 19th century. Um, so it really focuses on colonialism, like really affected this in a very negative way. You know, yeah, the civilizations were greatly impacted by the arrival of Europeans in the 16th century um, and the newcomers carried all this stuff. Like, I just think it's handled very well. You know, it doesn't talk about George Washington. It talks about um, different movements of civil rights and stuff. And I just, I really like that. Um, so this definitely sold me on this book. I highly recommend this one. I'm going to try to go quicker because I'm going so slow through these books. <laughs> um, and then this is the last one that I got. Where on Earth Atlas. I like all of the different kinds of maps. Like, that's really fun. I don't like this weird turned perspective. I think that's so odd. Like, I don't know why it does that. But I I wish I liked this more because I like all the different things that you get to see, population. And I've been wanting just a purely maps one. I think I found one. I ordered it. Hopefully it's exactly what I want. But yeah. If you want like just a lot of maps, this is a really great choice. I just don't like that it's tilted. <laughs> like I don't know. I don't know why that bothers me so much. And then some of the pages are just like repeat, you know? Um, to other things that I have. So, yeah, I do like this one. I do think it would be a great addition. It's just not quite perfect and a little bit more expensive than I wanted. Um, you know, because really I just need maps. But yeah, so where on Earth Atlas from DK. And again, that one's not recommended from anybody. Let's do kind of animal stuff now. Both curriculums around the world deal with animals and then I've decided to add on another animal uh, curriculum. So I've decided to add on uh, Blossom and Root. Their year three science is all about animals. And this is the spine recommended. And I will definitely be getting this book. I wish I would have gotten this book from the library sooner because since then I was at like a bargain place and got an animal encyclopedia that looked really nice, but nothing compared to this. <laughs> like this is really nice. The pictures are amazing. Just the amount of animals in this is crazy and the different variations of the picture. Like it's just so nice. And then it always tells you about each group of animals. Like this might be my favorite spine choice of anybody. Like a lot of other ones, I'm like really <laughs> picking and choosing. But this one, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh wow, yeah, this is what I want, <laughs> you know? So. This one seems so cool. And if you see how thick this is, it's huge. <laughs> so animal with an exclamation point. Um, Smithsonian one, so good. Okay. And then we have a world full of animal stories. I believe last time I shared just a world full of stories. And again, this one is not as diverse as I wanted. So you can kind of see the groups here. Um, these are pretty much all Native American tales, so that is nice. But, I mean, this one actually is a lot more diverse. I guess just more Africa. Like, you know, why isn't there more Africa? And again, South America is always kind of, yeah. This one, North America is heavily, <laughs> heavily the focus. Um, however, it's all, most of it at least, oops, sorry. Most of it at least is our Native but I think I'm not. Somebody recommended, which I think <laughs> I will end up doing like a podcast that has a bunch of folk tales instead of buying this um, because they just really didn't like the stories. And I've heard pretty mixed reviews. I love the illustrations um, and I love folk tales in general, but we have heard so many folk tales. So it'd be nice to just go with a podcast route and be able to just pick and choose, you know? So that's kind of the plan right now. So we will see. But yeah, so I think this is nice, but I don't think we'll end up getting it. This, I believe, is from Torchlight. Um, at least a lot of people get it when they get Torchlight. And I, this is How Like a Wolf Learned to Think, Move, and Act Like 15 Amazing Animals. And I don't think we will end up getting this. It is pretty fun and unique. Um... However, I just, I'm just not this type of crafty person. And a lot of these seem, things seem a lot more crafty 
I like the little play things that there are, but all the building things, like I'm just, I just know myself too well and I'm, I'm not going to do it. This is a beautiful book though. So if you are all about crafts, this would be great. It teaches you about the animal. There's like a craft and then you can pretend to be the animal in a lot of ways. So I like that. Yeah. Like use a hose nose. So some of this is really cool. So I'll probably end up checking this out from the library multiple times, but I don't think I'll end up purchasing this. But yeah. Okay. This I got, this is not like, I don't think this is anybody's like either Torchlight or, <laughs> sorry, I can't talk. This isn't Torchlight or Villager Libraries or uh, Blossom and Roots um, for their animal studies or whatever. Sorry about all this hair. My goodness. Um, anyway, so however, Torchlight has one that's made by the same company, like very similar thing, but with women. So I think it's like 50 Extraordinary Women That Made History. Um, and I'm not sure what the title is, but it's something like that. My, my whole library system didn't have that book. So instead, I got this one to check out and see. And I love this one. I absolutely love this one. <laughs> it is so rich and full of so many details. Like, oh my gosh, so cool. Um, and tells about animals all around. I will be honest, I have not read all of this. So I don't know, um, like some things... I was flagged a little bit by that I think I will have to read before I go but some of these you know like we know that elephants at circus animals are not good you know um but I mean this one is just an elephant that saved a girl from drowning or yeah so I think it just depends it's gonna depend I I think these are chosen well hopefully um but we will have to see. If you have used this book, let me know. But I thought this would be a great addition to just show some like fun animals as we're going around the world and as we're um, learning about animals, you know? I thought this would be really, really fun. So yeah, I'm excited about this. I think I, think I will end up buying this, but I'll let you guys know. <laughs> and if you have this or if you have any opinions about this, please let me know. Because, yeah, it is really beautiful. I love the combination of, like, real pictures and illustrations and all the little bits about it. Really cool. <laughs> I don't remember what I showed. <laughs> I might have shown this as well. I'm pretty positive I showed the Build Your Library. I'll show you. <laughs> this one in the last haul. But in case I didn't, here's, like, a little flip through. It's different. Um, it's, uh, like, different poets throughout history, you know, present day past poets all about animals like it's all compiled with beautiful photography that is build your library's choice for their poetry book and this is torchlight's choice and this one is really beautiful so this one is not photography it's all uh drawn and illustrated really pretty um however if i had to choose between both of them i would choose the build your library one I probably, I really love these illustrations. However, this same illustrator author duo did the Torchlight Pre-K one and we just never pulled it out. I didn't love the poems. None of them are funny or anything, which tend to be what my kids really go for. So even though these are really cool, I, I think I'm definitely not getting this one and I'm not sure about the other one. I would get the other one a lot more. I would get this one well before I got the other one just because there's like funny stuff and it shows a wide range of poets and fun pictures but I just have so many poetry books <laughs> so I just don't know if that makes sense. I have more <laughs> around the world books so this is a torchlight spine if you lived here houses of the world um, and if I get anything wrong feel free to correct me in the uh you know in the comments that does not bother me at all. This just shows different types of houses around the world. And it seems really cool. I like, I'm not sure how these are done with collage maybe. Um, and they seem really cool. Somebody said this was one of their favorite books from the curriculum. It doesn't have a ton though. Like it's, it's just like a picture book, you know? So I, I'm hesitant. Obviously I can get this cheaper, I'm sure. But let's see, where does it say? Normally picture books share the price somewhere. 
yeah, like $18, I can get a full atlas for that. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm hesitant to buy it, but it seems really cool. Oh, I didn't realize there's a map with that. And it shows the different places. So again, only one in South Africa, one in, I mean, South America, sorry. <laughs> one in Africa, nothing in Australia, a ton in Europe, a ton in the United States. So I, I, I think I'm not. I think this is one we'll just check out from the library often, you know. But I won't purchase. That's my plan, at least. Okay. And then we have, what do you celebrate? And this one I've actually seen before um, because you use this in Torchlight Pre-K as well. At least this is an extension, I believe. Or this might be the main one. But it just shows different holidays around the world. Again, I think this would be another one that would just be checking out every once in a while from the library because it seems fun and cool but I just know in my heart of hearts I'm not <laughs> yeah I can't do this you know I'm not a big crafty person yeah so but it is cool so I will end up checking it out but this is not something I need to personally purchase but I love the illustrations so really cool but again like for the price I don't want to spend my money on this you know for $17 again, for like a picture book. Not my type of thing. Okay, and I think most of these are gonna be no's for me. This is big science for little people. This is Torchlight's science. And we're already gonna be doing a lot of other science things. And as soon as I saw this book, I was like, oh, nope, nope, this is not, <laughs> I don't like crafty things. If I'm doing science, I like demonstrations that like really clearly show things. I don't like flashy big projects that take a lot of time and make a lot of mess. I hope that makes sense. Not that anything is wrong with that. I just know my personality and I get very frustrated and this is not for me. <laughs> so, um, as well as <laughs> this. This is Build Your Library's art book and this is Global Art Activities, Projects, and Inventions from Around the World. And no, these are all crafty. I'm much more into, I think it's called like process over product art, um, where they're learning different types of things, not little crafty things to make that really matter how they turn out, you know? Um, so this is not for me. I looked at this instantly and was like, oh, nope, 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 nope. I will not have fun. I will be the not fun mom. I will be a uptight, anxious you know, yelling mom if I do these type of activities and I don't want to. <laughs> so I want to be, you know, fun and exciting. So, and part of that is choosing curriculum that you're not going to be upset about, you know? Okay. And then we have Never Too Young. A lot of people sub this for uh, the women, the 50 women that have made history book for Torchlight. Um, and I think I might get this because my kids say a lot of things like when they're older, they'll do this. And I want to show them they don't have to wait till they're older. And it's also really short. I don't think this is very around the world, though. Like it is, you know, obviously some some people. Um, it's not like strictly U.S. focused or anything, but it will take some work to try to do it with around the world. And there'll be quite a bit, I'm sure, from like the United States and stuff. And it doesn't specifically say so it would take effort on my part to do that, which I'll probably end up doing. But I think this is a yes. I think this is something that I want. But yeah, really cool. And it is fairly thick, um, not picture book size. So, okay, and then these ones are again from Torchlight. They're not, uh, these are not spines. But I wanted to check them out and see if I needed them, and I don't think I do. So this is the McElder, the Mick Eldery book of Aesop's Fables, um, and I just don't particularly love the illustrations, to be honest. And I read some of the stories, and I don't think the versions are that great either. Um, so we don't need this. Plus, we have tons of books. I just wanted to see if there was anything special about this that I would need, um, and I don't. So <laughs> I don't need that one. Especially, uh, and then Grimm's Fairy Tales, the same for that as well. I don't particularly love the illustrations. They're fine. Um, not, not my favorite. And the stories in it are ones that we have or can easily get from the library. So I don't even know if I would check out this version again. Um, but yeah, there's that. 
that is what Torchlight recommends. And then with animals, I, nobody has a yoga book like in their curriculum, but I thought that might be fun to add some yoga. And again, I don't think I'm gonna get this. This might be one we regularly check out, but I don't think this is one we're gonna buy. Cause we go to the library every week. So it's not a problem to check out books, you know? But if I'm gonna use it all the time, then I'm gonna wanna just have it and be able to, you know, really make it my own. So that one is cool. That's by National Geographic Kids. This is Yoga Animals. I think this is like an Usborne book or a, I think it's Kane Miller, which is under Usborne, yeah. And I like this one that it's like a story. And with the story, you're like doing the different poses. I like that a lot. Um, but again, I don't know if we're gonna purchase it. I haven't actually read this out loud to my kids, so we will see. If I end up really liking it, I might purchase it. But yeah, I only really have two art books to show you. I wanted to show you this one, Vincent Van Gogh, which honestly, I thought these were bigger and that you could use them more than one day, which I guess you can, you can split it up. But we read this in one sitting and we read, you know, a lot else that day. But yeah, it's really good. It does a really good job of describing everything about Van Gogh and different popular things. Um... Yeah, so I I did really like this one. This might be one that we end up purchasing because like I said, we're gonna be doing Van Gogh for a long time. So this might be one that is worth it. Um, and then the only other, other art book that I really have to show you is Come Look With Me Asian Art. So I've been searching for any type of like big, huge like DK or anything like that, big uh, like reference book of art around the world. However, I don't think that exists. If you know of something that does exist, please let me know. Um, this Come Look With Me series does have an Asian art, but I don't think they really have anything else. They have animals and art, which seems fun. They have art in early America, Latin America, but they don't have like enough, you know? I want them to have, they do have African-American art, but not specifically African. So I don't think this would fit for my around the world, but this is nice how they have different, you have different questions to ask your kid and then they tell you about the art. So I like this. Sorry if you guys are hearing the amount of <laughs> loud stomps around, but this is a very short book. I was expecting longer, but yeah. So in any case, that's one we might check out from the library. If you know of an around the world art type of book, let me know, because I'm definitely looking for that. And then the last section that I have is actually Blossom and Root, um, early American history or their River of Voices curriculum. So I got a ton and it's hard for me to remember, <laughs> but here is a spine. I think I will end up getting all of these. And again, sorry for the amount of hair. My dog is crazy, I guess, but in any case, um, I think I will end up getting all of these because honestly, there's not a great amount of choices of diverse, uh, like thicker, like books that you can use throughout the whole thing. Um, history for young kids, because I'm gonna be using The Gentle Path. I got some other books from other paths and it became very clear to me that I only wanna do The Gentle Path this year. But um, yeah, so this is the African-American history book. And I really like this one. It has really good illustrations throughout. I think just, I don't know if there's any photos. Yeah, I think it would be a little bit stronger with some photos as well, but yeah, and it just goes through and tells you all about black history in America. So I definitely will be getting this one. Here's a table of contents if you want to see, um, but I haven't gotten a chance to look through this really extensively, but in doing research and trying to find other options to look through and see, there are not many, okay? <laughs> so um, this is kind of, I think this will will be great. And then we have a kid's guide to Latino history with more than 50 activities. Now I like the African-American history one better. However, they don't have <laughs> other, other uh, like diverse history of America, you know? So this is nice and um, cool. I, again, I'm not a big project person. So if there were other options, I probably wouldn't go with this because I don't think I would, I don't think I'm gonna do many of the projects, you know? Maybe some of the very simple ones that are more of just games or fun, I would do, but any of the like 
you know, more intense things, I'm not sure I would do. So, um, and it's all black and white. So this one I was not as in love with. I think I will end up getting it though, because like I said, there's there are not very many options. And I do think she pick, did a good job of picking different things. There's also a kid's guide to Native American history um, with more than 50 activities, but I am waiting for that from the library. Okay, and then the other ones that I have, I th believe are in the like intermediate group. And I just don't really want to do that. Like this just seems like a lot of text. Um, but I could be wrong. Maybe this is used later too. But yeah, so this is the American Revolution for Kids, a history with 21 activities. I believe this one is for parents to read alongside. So I will be getting this if I am correct on this one. Um, or it might be for the older one. I'm not sure. But I really love this one. This one's really unique. Um, yeah, this library copy is not great. But yeah. But I believe this is for parents to read alongside so you like ha get a better understanding. Okay, and then these are some of the more specific things for the first like lesson and first real stuff that I got so that we can start right away. So this is about... I should have looked bow wow pow wow and it's cool because it is done in both English and um this miss a Beikong Ojibwe language so I think that is really cool and it's all by uh native authors and illustrators and translators so yeah this is part of the first Thing. I believe this is as well. Children of Native America Today. I don't think this is a spine. I think this is just, you can use this a lot. Um, and I think this is very important as well. I don't even know if this is scheduled. This is just like, read through this as you go, just to instill that Native American communities are still, you know, going strong today. And I like that it covers lots of things with real pictures. Because I think if illustrations were done in this book, it might not have been as effective to kids. Like, you know, these communities are still doing well, you know? Um, and then two chapter books. There weren't anything actually in the gentle pathway of to read for this first quarter. Um, so I pulled from the intermediate pathway. And these ones, they said, were the two that were the easiest or the youngest. Um, and we will be reading this one first, Morning Girl. And it's all about a girl in the Caribbean and she's morning girl. She wakes up early and her brother is star boy. And I think it like alternates between the two and eventually, um, oddly dressed strangers rowing towards shore. She tries not to laugh. She's being taught to always be polite and invites the visitors to land. So yeah, so we will see. And then a lion to guard us. And this is all about a settlement in Jamestown. They have to go and find their father after their mother dies. So again, this one seems fairly easy too. And obviously I'll be going in that order because that makes more sense. But yeah. But normally they suggest that you just pick one to read throughout the quarter. I can show you guys this. <laughs> this is not really homeschool related or anything, but this is a, a Minecraft book that my son checks out from the library all the time. Um, he loves any sort of Minecraft book that can teach him how to make different types of houses or different things. So, yeah. It's not very detailed, though. You have to do a lot of figuring out yourself. It just gives you kind of inspiration and little tips. But yeah, so if you have a Minecraft lover, this might be a good, good bet. He has a lot of Minecraft books at home, but um, this is one we check out from the library, too. So yeah, really cool. And I feel like this could also fit in well with like a history type of unit. Um, he just made a really cool roller coaster. So yeah. Okay. So I think that is it. If you guys stayed through this whole video, um, <laughs> thank you. You're amazing. Um, and you can leave like a book emoji so that I know that you, <laughs> you lasted the whole time. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like this video if... Uh, if you liked it and subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I'll see you guys in another video.